everyone, it's Laura. Welcome to my channel. So today we have a little bit of a different video. We are doing a thrift or pass video. Basically in this video what I'm going to be doing is reviewing some of the things that I passed by in the thrift store that I saw and letting you know, did I get it? Did I not? What did I think about everything? Now before we get into it, I do want to mention that I'm going to try to not go over every single little thing because that would make the video super long. And considering this first one is going to be based on the first thrifting vlog that I've done, that vlog itself is 35 minutes. <laughs> so I think going over every single item that I saw would probably make this video really super long, which is not my intention. We're just going to go over the things that are particularly notable, things that I noticed, whether it was like from a good or a bad standpoint. By the way, if you haven't watched the thrift vlog that I have, the first one, you can go ahead and check that out. The link to it is going to be down below in the description. I also will take some of the items that I see and kind of look up like what they're possibly worth and whether or not maybe like it would be good from a reselling perspective. <laughs> Make sure to stay tuned until the end because I will be having some surprise things that I got off camera as well as giving some awards to some of the interesting items that I've seen at the thrift store. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So right off the bat, we started off strong by finding this calm lavender chamomile candle. And it was a pretty like decent sized candle like it was you know it was pretty good and I like the smell so I did thrift it now while I did mention it smelled very good I will say candle wise not really the best candle <laughs> um, I don't feel like it lasted long enough considering how big it was I have candles that are significantly smaller that have lasted beyond this candle like that that candle is pretty much done at this point so yeah, even though it was at a reasonable price, I wouldn't necessarily go for that brand again. I also had some earrings that I got, and I would say I did thrift some of them. Majority of them I did end up put, putting back on the shelf. I did really like all of them, honestly, but generally my strategy at the thrift store is to put a bunch of things that I like in the cart, and then at the end of shopping, I will compare what I like the most versus what I don't. Because nine times out of ten, I can't get everything. And I usually have a budget in place, which is very important. Because like any store, you can overshop at a thrift store totally 100%, even when things are cheap. So with that being said, I did get the flower earrings where the little dangly things were coming out of the floral thing. I also got those kind of abstract blue and copper looking earrings. Those were pretty cool and different. I'm not going to lie, there was a couple that I wish that I did get, like the ones that look like tiles. I kind of wish I got those. I also wish I got the flower earrings, the ones with the white petals and the diamond in the middle. Those are actually really, really cute. But at the time, I didn't think it was cute enough with the other things that I found to get it. So although I thought this fish thing was cool. I did end up passing on that. Not really sure where it came from. I also thought that the seashell eye on the bottom was kind of weird. I was like, isn't that supposed to be on the top? I don't really understand that. The porky pig glass I also passed on. It was a very cute glass. I actually looked it up. It's from the 1970s and naturally it comes in a set with other Looney Tunes characters. And honestly, it was a pretty good find from a reselling perspective. The glass was in pretty good condition. I looked up sold comps online and you could probably sell it between $5 to $10. So it's not a huge profit, but $1.50, there's still some money to be made there. However, ideally, you would like to have the whole set because the whole set would be like 40 bucks. Definitely resellable, not a huge profit margin there, but I like Looney Tunes. Not typically my thing, and I have enough glasses, so I did end up putting it back. The cat trivet I saw, that was actually cuter than I had given it credit for, but I did end up passing on it. Again, something that was resellable. I didn't look up sold comps on this one. I don't even really remember what the price on it was. It is a cute little tray, but again, just not my thing. I have enough trays. Um, so that ended up going back on the shelf as well. Contrarily, I did thrift the sl Slowpoke plushie. See, I can't even say Slowpoke. I couldn't say it in the video and I can't say it now. <laughs> so it was super cool finding that Slowpoke plushie. I 
just really like that. I have a little collection of nostalgia plushies on my shelf, and he just fit right on along in there with some other Pokemon and Neopets and things like that. So it was a great find for me. I didn't keep the other plushies that were in there. They weren't really my thing. So I ended up donating those back to the Goodwill. So the salt and pepper shakers, I did think those were pretty cute, but I ended up passing on those as well. Like they were cute. There was nothing particularly wrong with them. I like that they were made in Japan, vintage, but there were just other things in my cart that I felt were most worthy spending on. And so I did end up putting it back on the shelf. I did also pass on the Eevee Bank. I do love Pokemon and the Eevee Bank was very cute, but it needed a stopper. And I wasn't really willing to pay the price for that. It looked like one of those pieces that you get at those places where you can paint your own thing, like a hobbyist piece type of thing. Maybe it wasn't. Wasn't in love with it that much. I do like Eevee, but he's not like one of my favorite Pokemon. So I was like, uh, I, I'll pass on this for now. So those Dandara handmade trees, I tried looking those up. It must be a local artist or something not well known or something because I could not find them for the life of me. I thought they were beautiful, but I did pass on those. I have enough Christmas decorations. I have a small place, so I don't really want to be overwhelming myself with holiday decorations. I'm of the mindset where I do like to put things up for the holidays, but I don't like to overwhelm my space with that stuff. And then it just ends up in storage for most of the year and it's just taking up space in my closet. With that being said, I did end up putting that back on the shelf. Very pretty though. What was also pretty was the Ainsley Bone China dish that I found. I wasn't going to research that too hard, but that's something also that could potentially be resellable. I don't know what the sold comps on that were, but I did end up, end up passing on that. Also, I don't really collect things that I can't really see the design on the outside. <laughs> so while it was fun on the inside, super beautiful and everything, and the outside wasn't bad itself. For me, I had like planters and things like that, things where you could see the designs on the outside from a shelf from somewhere, so you don't have to pick it up and look at it. And I have enough like trinket dishes and things like that that I don't need to be buying more <laughs> trinket dishes or dishes in general. So yes, I did pass on that. So we were at the mug section and I was super excited when I found this, this Starbucks Ca Cancun mug. For those of you that don't know, those can go for a lot of money, those travel mugs. And this specific mug was from a series of travel mugs. I forgot what the name of it's called, but I did look up sold comps for uh, this Cancun mug and generally it, it could sell for a good amount of money. Like it's definitely a steal to buy that at $1.50 if you were planning to resell it on eBay because it generally has sold recently between as low as $15 to as high as like $50. So generally on average, like about $35. This includes ones that were in and out of box, but even the out of box ones were still selling between like $15 to $30. Now for me personally, since I don't resell anymore, it doesn't really make sense for me to be buying that for myself because I'm not a huge coffee fan. I do go to Starbucks. Generally when I do get coffee, it's more of like the dessert type of coffee, I'm being honest. <laughs> and I've never been to Cancun, so there was really no personal attachment for me to that mug. So with that being said, I left it for someone else. I'm hoping it went to someone who either really enjoyed it, maybe been to Cancun, or somebody that could benefit from reselling that potentially. One of the things I also like to look for at thrift stores is things that I could paint and redo and little craft projects because I'm a very artistic person. You may not be able to see it from here, but down here is actually a whole container of things that I eventually want to paint and make into other things. So I'm not lacking in that department. So when I found this retro looking video game machine, I thought, oh, this might be a cool thing to repaint or things like that. But I didn't end up passing on it. I already have a lot of projects that I'm working on or need to work on in the future. And for me, it was like, okay, I don't need to add one more thing. Also, it was battery operated, which I don't know why at the time it just really kind of put me off to like paint on something battery operated. There was a very like gloss finish to the plastic. I just felt like it would have been kind of a pain to sand down and repaint and things like that. Maybe not, but at the end of the day, I did pass on that. So we found another thing that was Pokemon related 
and I did end up getting this one. This is the Flareon toy that I found, and it's a new toy. It's not vintage or anything, but Flareon is a Gen 1 Pokemon, one of my favorites from when I was a kid, and I actually have the figure right here. So for those of you in box elitist, yes, I did take it out of the packaging. <laughs> Don't come at me. But yeah, I just really liked it. I like that it, you know, her head kind of moves around and everything like that. I already have some Pokemon figurines in the shelf that's not on camera. Um, but and this goes perfectly with that whole collection. Another thing I found in the toy section were Beyblades. And for somebody who collects Beyblades or is into that or kids that like to play with them, that would be a super awesome find because there was a lot in there. I did pass on those, though, because my brother got rid of his collection a long time ago, I found out. So it wasn't really worth for me to him to gift him that when he's already gotten rid of it. But there's still fond memories attached to that series. That was something that he used to play. So I figured I'd just ask him for the heck of it, but I did end up putting that to the side. So now we transition over to the things that I found at the Village Discount. And one of the things that I thrifted there that I found right off the bat, which was super exciting, was the dragon sculpture. And I actually have it behind me right now. So this dragon sculpture came in box. And it was pretty much almost in perfect condition. There were a couple like things and things like that. And I didn't know. I was like, okay, I don't have batteries here. I can't test to see if it really lights work or not or things like that but I took a chance on it aesthetically it was overall great so I did end up picking it up so as you can see I have it right here and there is some minor damage um, I won't zoom up too much to kind of make the camera go wonky tonky this horn right here the little tip off of it is broken the, the very tippy top and then there's also the sorcerer's staff that's also broken, but it is, um, there's a wire under it, so it's still like pretty much solidly on there, but it, it has been broken off before. Let me see if I can turn this on. So as you can see, it's, it's not the best lighting because the <laughs> it's very sunny out right now, but the light on it does work. Pretty much it just kind of illuminates this whole thing. So yeah, this was a really awesome find. I do like fantasy related things. I don't know if you can tell in the back there's a, uh, oh, I gotta move this way. There's a dragon back there as well. His name is Edgar. I've looked up photos of him online. I got him at a different, uh, different thrift store, different time. I just love him. I think he's great. He makes a great plastic pet. And unlike my cat, he doesn't puke when I feed him too much food. On a serious note, I love my cat, that dragon. And I love this dragon as well. So the bag with the My Little Ponies, I did pass on that. I was convinced like, oh, maybe it's vintage or things like that. But upon closer expression, I realized it wasn't necessarily vintage, though in a couple of years, it could be considered vintage since it was from 2006. <laughs> it's not like relatively new, but it's not an old, old one either. I like the colors on and everything, and I would just feel kind of bad repainting that one. I felt better if it kind of went to somebody who specializes in selling or collecting My Little Ponies or someone who just wants to play with them. Uh, so, um, and like I said before, I have plenty of projects and things to paint, so I did leave those My Little Ponies behind. I also passed on that Rainbow Birdhouse. I thought $20 for it honestly was kind of ridiculous because it wasn't like in perfect condition or anything. And honestly, it's still there. <laughs> um, and I'm recording this like weeks after I've gone. I think most people thought it was a little expensive as well. It's super adorable. Like you have the rainbow roof and everything like that. Super duper cute. Um, you would probably need to do some repairs on it. And for my personal preference, the purple was a little faded for me. Uh, but yeah, no, it just wasn't worth picking up for $20. I do love my figurines. So when I found these cat and dog figurines, I was super excited. They had some age to it and everything. Uh, the cat had seen some better days. And it wasn't like the cutest cat I've seen in the world in terms of figurines. 
so I did end up passing on that cat, but I did get the dog. I don't know much about this um, specific figurine. It definitely had some age to it. I like that it was a poodle. I love big fluffy dogs. I'm not into like toy dogs like poodles usually, but I just like the way that this figurine looks. So here she is, and she's just in really good condition overall. She resides in my kitchen currently. I still have the price on it, to be honest. I paid, it looks like $3.10. It was at least $3. I don't know what the numbers after it was. Three bucks for this is pretty good, in my opinion. Now we'll talk about the Impressionist paintings. And I have a small collection of Impressionist paintings in my bedroom, and I just love them. I think they're super beautiful, and I see, see them at the thrift stores that I go to a lot. The ones that I found, the smaller one, I was kind of like, oh, that's $9. I don't really want to spend it on that. I didn't really necessarily like the outcome of the painting. You know, it wasn't like as much of a quality as the ones that I have at home, in my opinion, for my personal preference. But then I found this bigger one, and that one was just so beautiful. And um, it was very well done. And so I was like, yeah, I'm definitely going to get that. Um, it was <laughs> almost three times the price of the smaller one, but I think it was well worth it for $20. I, I don't know how much that painting would sell for. I'm not an expert on that stuff, but um, some the Impressionist paintings I have, I looked up that specific artist and some of them have sold for like $200. So definitely if you are into reselling, or flipping things, it's worth to kind of look at the paintings and things like that. And if you get educated on that, you might be able to make some money from that. But yeah, I just buy them for uh, personal use. So I did end up buying the larger one. And finally, we had the little tiny Rothenberg vase. Not particularly anything astounding about it, but I just thought it was kind of pretty, you know, if somebody wanted um, something like that. And I also wanted to say I kept saying humidor. <laughs> I said humidor. I think it's Hummendorf German. It's a German vase. They don't, they're not particularly remarkable. I didn't really find any sold comps online. Similar things sold for like 18 to 20 bucks. So yeah, I, I did end up passing on that as well. So now we're in the surprise section of the thrift or pass segment and things that I thrifted specifically that I did not show on camera. So if you had a good eye, you might have seen that I had a bag of perfume in my cart at the Unique Thrift Store. I did end up picking up this cherry blossom bath and body work scent. It was pretty much full or close to full. I haven't really used it that much. Two things that can be particularly expensive buying new are candles and perfume. Bath and Body Works isn't like hugely expensive and they generally have good sales and everything. If I could get a scent that I like at the thrift store for like three or four bucks, I'll do it. You know what I mean? It's totally worth it. I'm not someone who necessarily has a specific scent. I just kind of go with whatever smells good on me. And this smells particularly good on me. And these Bath & Body Works perfumes, for me, tend to last a pretty long time. So I think this was definitely worth getting it for like a few bucks. Another thing I also got off camera was this little guy right here. So um, I, and to be real, like, it's, I, I don't know what animal this is supposed to be. <laughs> Um, it's vintage. It's one of those vintage little planters. You can see there's a little spot to put plants in though. I don't, I don't put plants in my planters. If I had anything, I'll put like maybe a starter in there or something, but they need room to kind of, you know, irrigate. That's a whole other topic. Anyway, so yeah, I got it for $2.70. So I think that was pretty cool for this little tiny planter right here. But yeah, I think it's an ox or something. And I just thought he was kind of cute and different, and I like little things like this. So I ended up picking him up for three bucks, essentially. Now, I do have a couple awards to give out that are essentially meaningless. There's a couple things of note that I just want to recognize that I did not pick up, but do re receive some honorable mentions from yours truly. So the first thing I have to give an award to is the cute find of the day and that was the homemade felt penguin. I did not buy this but I just thought it was super cute. I like when people go and try to make their own things. You can tell somebody you know was cutting the felt and everything and then you know kind of hand stitched it and, and stuffed it together and I just appreciate things like that. They obviously gave it away so they weren't you know a fan of it anymore but I just thought it was a cute 
a cute little thing to have. I hope somebody picked it up and gave it a good home because I just get kind of sentimental when I see people's artwork and things at the thrift store. So that was definitely the cutest thing I saw that day. The weirdest thing I saw that day was that eyeball purse. Uh, It was that blue purse with the two eyeballs blinking. I don't know what that was. So I was just absolutely fascinated by this purse. And I looked it up. I noticed it had like a PP logo on the side. I thought maybe that stood for Polly Pocket, but the Polly Pocket logo just seems to have the full wording on it. I don't really see like PP as as the logo, but I mean, I could be wrong. And Polly Pocket does have purses in like, whether it's vintage or otherwise. I don't think this was a particularly old purse, but I was just like, that's so odd. And then you open the purse too. So it's this little clutch and the eyes are battery operated or mechanically operated or something. So there's this big giant like thing behind them and there's no room to really put anything in the purse. So it's not particularly the most practical thing. It's, it really is just for show and for people to be like, you know, what is that? You know, I'm thinking it's either like a kid's purse or just, just something odd. I don't know. Like that's the only thing I can think of. Did not get it, but I was just bewildered by that. I was like, I've never seen anything like that before. (laughs) Fashion is full of surprises. This doesn't get a reward, but I did want to mention that the close second to the weirdest find was that painting. It was one of those paintings I think that someone painted over and put like another saying on it, whatever doesn't kill you probably should have. (laughs) But that, that bordered on being versus cute weird like the purse was to kind of scary weird (laughs) so I I went with the cute weird for um for the award for that one well everybody that is it I hope that you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments below what do you think of my decisions should I thrifted have should have thrifted some things and passed on others let me know in the comments below what you would have picked out in the meantime if you haven't subscribed yet make sure that you do I try to release thrift vlogs every Friday. So stay tuned for those and I will see you next time. Take care. Have a good one.